Are turtles and tortoises the same thing? That's one of the most common questions we get in herpetology. In this video, we're gonna talk about it because all tortoises are in fact turtles, but it's not the other way around. tortoises are in fact turtles and that's because turtles and tortoises belong to the group Testudines also known as Colonia and what that means is that they are vertebrates that are encased or encompassed by a shell and we all know that the turtle or tortoises shell is a permanent part of its body unlike that of a hermit crab so why don't we just call all of them turtles and you'll see people correcting each other constantly but don't blame me blame science Tortoises are turtles, but turtles are not tortoises. So if all turtles are not tortoises, is tortoise just some kind of neat or fancy way to refer to a type of turtle? Well, no, not really, because there are notable differences between turtles and tortoises. And as you can see right here with this yearling Galapagos tortoise and this adult male map turtle, there are vast differences. So it's really no surprise that a lot of people think, well, there's no way turtles and tortoises can be the exact same thing. So it, there's some fine print there. There is some gray area, but the truth of the matter is that tortoises are turtles. Although turtles and tortoises do belong to the same family, they do have separate classifications and that's partly due to their anatomy and also to what they're adapted to live in. In the case of most turtles, they live an aquatic life. And we're not just talking about sea turtles. We're talking about freshwater turtles like the map turtle right here. And you can see that especially in his rear feet, which are basically like paddles. They're so highly webbed that this turtle can streamline through the water. And that's also thanks to his less domed shell and how sleek his body and shell have been designed. That highly contrasts a tortoise. Now, when it comes to the tortoises, one of their most recognizable traits are those elephantine back feet. They really look like they belong to an elephant. Their front limbs are not flipper-like whatsoever, and although these animals do appreciate water, they do not live their lives in water. Tortoises truly are designed to live their lives primarily on land, even though some of them are pretty good swimmers. In the case of the giant Aldabra tortoises, they've been known to swim from island to island. It's in the way that they travel though. Those animals aren't diving down deep and streamlining through the water. They're essentially floating. When it comes to the diets of turtles and tortoises, one misconception is you will hear people say that a main difference is that tortoises are solely vegetarians, whereas turtles are omnivorous, eating both plant matter and animal matter. Well, let me offer you a little bit of information here. Tortoises can and will consume animal matter. Some tortoises, like the South American red-footed tortoise, really enjoys animal matter, and that's not the only species that will do that. A lot of tortoises, Herman's tortoises, will even get themselves killed on roadways because they are helping themselves to a road-killed animal. So it's not as cut and dry as some of the literature out there will tell you when it comes to the diets of these animals, but mostly there's a little bit more of a vegetarian in a tortoise and a little bit more of an omnivore or even carnivore in a turtle. So just like the Galapagos tortoise you just got to see, I have two more super classic quintessential tortoises. Dave right here is a South American redfoot tortoise and Zuri right here is an African leopard tortoise. You'll notice both tortoises have significant arcs or domes to their carapaces, which is the top shell. And right off the bat, you will notice the structure of both their front and rear feet. And particularly on the rear feet, just how elephantine they look. Tortoises are really kind of burly looking animals, very primitive. And even though a species like a Galapagos tortoise or a redfoot tortoise are suitable for a more humid environment, they look like they kind of all belong in the desert because of how rugged they appear to be. Now, when it comes to water, redfoot tortoises really, really, really love water. And even though they don't swim in ponds or lakes or anything like that, like a red-eared slider or a map turtle would, they do love wading in it and even taking to streams and getting some cool off when it gets that hot. Leopard tortoises, on the other hand, have been known to cross rivers, some of which actually have some pretty fast-moving waters in them. 
Tortoise species such as these are really no stranger to water, but it's really again about how they use it and how they're capable of moving through it. They cannot dive into it and swim with ease. They have to figure out how to stay buoyant and simply get back to land because they are truly designed for a life on land. Sometimes nature throws us for a loop. So you just heard me say that turtles have more sleeker looks to them. They're a little more streamlined for an aquatic life. Well, what about when a tortoise is really flat like the African pancake tortoise? We've done several videos about these guys and girls right here and how they don't even fit the bill with turtle or tortoise, but they are through and through a tortoise which of course does make them a turtle, we already talked about that, but they are classified with the tortoises, they have those elephantine feet, and they are suited for a life on land, and in fact, although these tortoises appreciate some rain and they'll try to drink it from puddles and rocks, they purposely stay away from any kind of body of water. Okay, so now I have two aquatic turtles, not tortoises. But you might be noticing this one right here saying, that's a terrapin. Well, yeah, that is the very famous diamondback terrapin. But folks, just like the tortoise thing, terrapins are in fact turtles. So it's no surprise that these species are equipped for a life in water. And the only time that these turtles really use the land is to bask in the sun. If they're females, they will lay their eggs on land. And sometimes, in the case of painted turtles mostly, they will travel across land to body of water to body of water. You can see how sleek their bodies are and how their shells are flatter, similar to that of a pancake tortoise. But really, the big indicator are those highly webbed feet and the fact that the back feet are like giant paddles to the point where in some cases they don't even really look like they really fit the body, like they're not proportionate. But these animals can glide through the water with ease and they will launch themselves off rocks, logs, and banks to get away from humans and predators. Diamondback terrapins are the only native species to the brackish waterways of our country, whereas the eastern painted turtle right here is a famously known species that tends to spend most, if not all of its time, in more fresh water. Now, you'll hear people in other countries saying things like, well, terrapins are the animals that occur in water, tortoises all occur on land, and the only real turtles are those in the ocean, which would be the sea turtles. Now in each country, things might be different, but when you are going with science, that's not the case. Sea turtles are turtles, just like the diamondback terrapin and the painted turtle, and the tortoises are the species that we just showed you. But you'll also see a lot of people refer to two other types of turtles as tortoises. And while long time ago, they were called tortoises in literature, they are in fact not. And I'm talking about the box and wood turtles. What I have here are three very young box turtles, we have a Florida, a Chinese box turtle, a Gulf Coast box turtle, of course, the one and only Otis who's gonna have to stain my hands so he doesn't attack anybody here, and a representative of the wood turtles. This is the North American wood turtle, but wood turtles go all the way down into South America and other areas. When it comes to wood and box turtles, so many people mistaken them for tortoises, and old literature doesn't help because a lot of times these were listed in books as box tortoises and wood tortoises. They are in fact actually turtles. They do have some webbing to their feet. They can take to water very easily. And while you should never go and throw a box turtle in a lake, they absolutely can submerge and swim. It's pretty amazing. Wood turtles are also pretty aquatic. And in fact, North American wood turtles live in mountain streams and around them. They spend a great deal of time in the water and also on land like a tortoise would, but they are not a tortoise. Both species are omnivorous, eating both plant matter and animal matter, and they will not hesitate to attack things. They will take down small birds, small mammals, and plenty of invertebrates. Of course, one of the most interesting thing about box turtles, which wood turtles do not have, is the hinge on the plastron that allows them to fully close up. They're not the only turtle species with that. Mud turtles have it, so do Blanding's turtles, to name just a couple. And even some tortoises, like Greek tortoises, have hinges on the plastron. But the big difference here is that none of them can fully close up like the amazing box turtles. Although box turtles and wood turtles have that rugged appearance like a tortoise does, they are actually more closely related to pond turtles because they are in the amided family. Might be hard for you guys to believe, but it is in fact the ultimate truth. And you will hear people call out Otis as being a tortoise, but folks, he is a turtle through and through. 
So just like how all toads are frogs and newts are salamanders, tortoises and terrapins are turtles. These animals are all extremely unique in their own right. And as we already discussed, they're classified differently to a certain extent. Tortoises are extremely unique and we call them tortoises here. But there really is no argument there. If somebody tells you that all tortoises are turtles, that is the truth, folks. That is science. There's a lot of opinions that get thrown around out there, especially on social media, and sometimes people just don't know how to label things properly. Take Herman's tortoise, for example. A lot of people call them Herman tortoises. It was discovered by a French naturalist whose last name is Herman. Therefore, it's Herman's tortoise, not Herman tortoise. But that's just one little simple example, and it's fun to have a healthy debate about that kind of stuff. But you can't ignore science. It is the truth. It's what we all go by and what we should go by. But in the end, every single one of these animals is peculiar, unique, special, and charismatic in its very own right. Whether it's a terrapin, a turtle, or a tortoise, or if you just want to call them all turtles, that's perfectly fine.